How's it going guys? Today I got my good buddy Marco Till here again. Marco was on a video with me about four months ago and then just a few weeks ago talking about his trip to Thailand. Today we're going to be talking about a pretty controversial topic. Power and especially power as foreigners in the Philippines. A uh, very different topic than normally I would bring up here but I think something that really needs to be discussed. So let's go. Subscribe now. Action. <laughs> Action. <laughs> so Marco, good to have you back, buddy. First time you are on the channel was, I just checked it out four months ago. Four months. Actually, that's not true because we did a quick one uh, three weeks ago uh, about, uh, you know, Thailand versus Philippines. But when we talked about all the good stuff, yeah, it's already been four months. So how long have you been in the Philippines this trip? So, yeah, so I got back from the, uh, so, yeah, I actually went to extend my visa and I said, whoa, 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 what are you talking about February 6th? No, it's February 20th. I got here on December. I got here in early December. So yeah, it's almost been a month I've been back. Right. Where and is then, time going? So a month back from Thailand and then when did you first come to the Philippines? This Way trip? July. Okay. Yeah, July. So yeah, left. About half a year or so now. Six months. Yeah, yeah. So last time we talked just a lot about perceptions and life and dating and, you know, all that good stuff. But I mean, the Philippines, uh, I found, I'll be curious what you think, but I found that what the Philippines appears to be like when you first come here is not really what it's like for the most part. I mean, superficially, yes, but there's, there's so much complexity and depth and counterintuitive things uh, here as well. But what about you? What's been your, you know, um, perspective after being here longer time? I would agree 100% that the longer you're here, the, the, the more the <clears throat> veneer mm -hmm. wears off yeah. and you see more realness. And, and I've had really quite a privilege to know you and to uh, see the Philippines through your eyes because I'm not a business owner here. I'm, sure. And so when I interact with uh, Filipinos, 99% uh, of the time, I'm a foreigner. Yes. I have all that foreign power, innate power. Um, uh, I, I try to be nice and kind. I think the Filipinos pick up on that real quickly, especially Filipinas. And, and, and when you say power, you don't mean that you feel powerful, but just the perception of you. <clears throat> it is the perception, but it is also real. Sure. It's palatable. Sure. And I felt at the moment uh, I got to Southeast Asia, but even more so. And, and not only I can feel it myself, but I can watch it. I can sit in an expat bar and watch it unfold right in front of me. Sure. So, so tell me more what you mean by that. So it means that as a white foreigner and especially an American even gives it an extra oomph in the Philippines because of this special relationship uh, the two countries have had. Uh, when I walk into the room and it is, it's like, it's like the old Westerns. Like when you come through the swinging doors and the music stops and every, yeah. you know, every, all heads swing and even the ex, everybody kind of just, okay. There's a there, there's another one of us in in the room. Yeah. The Filipinos say, "Oh, there, you know, here comes, you know, I wonder what what's his story." So that it is absolute power. It's power in every interaction. I I act I I always try to be kind and respectful, and you know that. Mm -hmm. But there are things sometimes I do that I catch myself and say, I wouldn't be doing this in the United States. Sure. I would not be saying this the way I'm saying it. Not that it's disrespectful, but I'm, I'm exerting some power here that I know that I have. Um, and I, I guess for you and I, we've always talked about the self-awareness journey is so critical and important because you, it can be intoxicating. Mm -hmm. And just like any trip down something that's uh, giving you uh, some good positive vibe hits, you want more of it. You want more of it. Yes, yes. So how different do you feel like you are living in the Philippines compared to if you were back living in, in the U.S.? Well... I uh, mean, you're you. But you're you in a different cultural context. It's, it's, it's literally almost night and day. Wow. So 
So what would be different if I, I've only ever uh, met you in person here in the Philippines? You know, we got to know each other, chatted for, you know, months and months before you moved here. But I've ever known, I've only ever known you here in the Philippines. If I would have met you in the U.S., what do you think would be different? Yeah, and I'm, I'm going to pull back. I'm going to walk back the night and day uh, okay. comment because it's my, I'm doing it from inside my brain. And I feel like there's a night and day difference. I think to my friends, as a, as a friend, it would uh, not be that different. Okay. It would not be that how I am. There's a difference. But, for example, I am just so assertive here. Uh, nothing scares me. Okay. In terms of interactions. You know, last night I was walking home, it was night, and um, a young lady walked up next to me, and I just started a conversation with her. Sure. I would never do that. Right. In the United States, at night, walking down dark streets, and then you just start sparking up, a, you know. So that raises a lot of things. Obviously, you know, safety in the U.S., you would probably have anybody, you know, male or female, that would be a bit scared of some stranger just kind of coming up uh, to them. But I think also... Uh, you know, dynamics between women and men in the U.S., you know, compared to here, obviously so much different. But how much do you think that it's uh, how you would be just walking up to a woman and talking to her in the Philippines? How much of that has to do with power and how much of that has to do with women are just more open and friendly to talk here culturally in general? Ooh, that, that is true. They are. Be because if women were that open and friendly, I'm generalizing in the U.S., maybe it would just be the same way there. So is it power or is it just cultural well, differences? I, I think it's a mix. Okay. I definitely think it's a mix. And women are generally more on guard in the United States uh, where, where the, the evolution of the culture and the women's movement and such, the Me Too, that mm -hmm. whole thing. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. And, you know, and I'm all for it. Yeah. You got to have your guard up, you know, the, the Harvey Weinsteins, you know, the, those types of sure. things that have happened. They're real. They're true. So a woman's got to be on guard. Whereas here. But wait a second. You're going to tell me the Harvey Weinsteins aren't the equivalent isn't everywhere in the Philippines, too. Gosh, what am I saying? Ooh, walking down <laughs> because, that road. Because here it's probably cultural on the other side of it for guys. You know, it's probably even far more so. It here. can be. Yeah, just, can, just you talking about that and having an awareness of that. I don't know. How much you hear guys talking about that? I guess it comes down to the, the foreigner. Yes. Now, here would be a great experiment. To have me walk into a bar, do my thing, right? Interact, da 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 Yeah. Walk out. Now have a good-looking Filipino, educated whatever. He walks in. Yeah. And does tries to do the same interactions. Okay, that's our next episode right there. Yeah, and, and to me, my perception is uh, Filipinos would also respond very similarly to especially a good-looking, rich Filipino guy. Really? Okay. Uh, I, right. I, I really think so because I'll, I'll hear you know, women talk about guys that I know here that are uh, very well off and good-looking guys, and I'll definitely see heads turn and comments uh, made as well. And I could be wrong. These are one of the things where I wish I had a Filipino panel to fact check me on the spot. Right. But I think that richer Filipinas are slower to date foreigners. Uh, so my Absolutely. perception of if it, you know it's a Filipina from a wealthy family, they would not be so quick to look at you know foreigner guys. So I really think a lot of things depends on background here. Money changes things. You know the power dynamics become different when you know how many very wealthy Filipinos uh, there there are as well that make us look like a couple of homeless dudes. <laughs> so so right. you know, um, but we're really speaking you know pretty generally with these type of things as well. So power is an interesting thing, and when you talk about it. And I think when people watch this and they say, who's this guy, you know, talking about, he seems like a nice guy, but he's talking about having all this power, you know, in our cultural perspective, I think people look at that as, wait a second, who's this guy I think he is? Right. You know, like, is he arrogant or does he have a big right. ego or, you know, why is he talking about, uh, you know, having power? So knowing you, I know you're not that guy. So, you know, 
what would you say to people kind of watching like what is it for you in the philippines because i agree and i know exactly what you're talking about but you know for people that haven't been here what do you think it is that makes you know you feel that you have a a different level of power here yeah and it's it's definitely an innate power so it it, it is something that it is something that is given to me mm -hmm. i don't earn it initially sure i don't earn it walking in i I get it because I'm white and Amer I'm American, and maybe I'm going to come in and immediately, hopefully, personality does play into it. I'm sure. going to smile. I'm going to be open, uh, you know, because body language can play into it. You know, we all have our radars. Sure. And so, and you and I have both seen expats who walk in with the John Wayne swagger and, you know, don't mm -hmm. touch me and no eye contact. And, you know, even I think for Filipinas, although that still can be attracting, mm -hmm. Because of the possibilities of uh, security and all those things that American brings, but they're generally, and I, you and I have talked that yeah. they respond to, like all of a sudden somebody's being kind and respectful to me, yeah. and it's and there's a, a certain like wow this is I, I like this, and of course all human beings like that, yeah, we yeah. like that, yeah. I, I think it's really worth like thinking about what is power like. How do we even define that? I mean, for me, power is having influence having leverage, uh, you know, different things right. like like that, you know? So I, I think how we use influence, how we use leverage, you know, leverage looks like maybe having more money or, you know, different things, maybe more opportunities, things like that. You know, I think power is one of those things where here you could use it really well and, and make a difference in people's lives or you could really abuse it. And, and so when you look at other foreigners here, what's, you know, what's been your perception of how the foreigners that wind up in the Philippines use their power? Um, <clears throat> I think uh, generally, boy, generally, gen yeah. generally, I would say that a foreigner comes here and number one, he realizes that his money is going to go a lot farther. His retirement dollars, sure, sure, sure. And, and that is true. Yeah. Um, and then also, he's going to be able to choose a woman who's younger, who's uh, maybe higher on the beauty scale than mm -hmm. would be available to him in his home country. Right. Um, because of the power structure there. And you know, there's power structures in every culture and there certainly is in, in ours as well. But yeah, you come here and those are incredibly attractive pieces um, that help the foreigner in your case, you, you've realized now three years, you know, this quote, the downside of being in the Philippines, and there are, boy, there's yeah. some things that are incredibly difficult yes. at times for an American. Um, you know, just plain customer service things that we're just like used to in every store we walk into. Well, that, that sometimes doesn't exist here, unless I'm in a, a Ayala Mall, you know, where they've been trained in Starbucks and such. So. Yes. So I think you put up with that because, you know, uh, of these benefits. And, you know, quite honestly, we all want, we all want uh, love. We all want somebody who we get along with, somebody who just cares about us. Absolutely. And that's one thing you find very immediately, wow, they're, you know, for me, it's a little over the top because I'm pretty independent and I'm constantly saying, uh, you're not my mommy. Right. Which brings us to mommy and daddy, you know, that whole scenario. But yeah, they will, they will take care of you. So, so this is an interesting thing. So, so you're talking about when dating here, uh, your experience is that women will take care of you so much that you're like, you're not my mom, right? But I also think sometimes there's the dynamic where you're not my daughter and I'm not your dad. So do you feel that? Absolutely. Bit? Absolutely, and, I'm, sure. and I, I think both you and I, as teachers, innate, innately we're teachers, we want people to improve in their lives, such as mentors have done with us, is that, and I have had those, no, I am not doing that for you. And, mm -hmm. and learning, and you help me learn to draw my boundaries more, especially when giving money, sure. uh, immediate fixes and such. Mm -hmm. Like, um, I just had a recent conversation, like, no, I'm not sending you the taxi fare. I was willing to make sure you, you got to where you needed to go, which is back home in your flight. But I know you're close enough to the airport. You can walk if you need to. Sure. You need to take care of business. You know, it's like sure. empowering them. And sometimes that means hitting a wall. 
and I have learned from you that it's okay for them to hit the wall. Yeah, so, so that's the tricky thing is I think that there's a lot of things that are empowering about being a foreigner in the Philippines, but a lot of things that are kind of disempowering and that we could do that I think is unhelpful with people here as well. When I first came here, my heart was really to give back. I was just in love with being here and mm -hmm. love the people, love the country. And I was just amazed by how sweet, kind, respectful uh, people were here. But I think that my reaction of wanting to help everybody really fed, it really wasn't as helpful as I thought that it would be because I was really coming from kind of more of a Western perspective where you're helping, but it's temporary, you know, you're, yeah. you're, you're wanting to help people to just kind of cross to the bridge to the next place where they'll be able to keep walking themselves. But here, often it doesn't work like that. Here, you know, the first time you give, it's kind of like, then you're the magic genie that is granted the first yes. wish. And if you got the first wish, you got a here, million. Here you. Yes, so, so that's really the struggle here. And I've had to really change who I am in this context uh, in a lot of ways because I just really have to look at are my actions, even if really with right. like the best of intentions, um, you know, but were they doing more harm than good? So uh, that's what I find here. And, that, and that's probably dealing with power. You know, you can use power in ways right. that you think is helpful. Um, you're not wanting to abuse it. It's um, fun to be the genie. Yes, it is. Oh my gosh. Absolutely, yes. You know, let me let me spread the love, you know? Yes, yeah, absolutely. Uh, but uh, until you really understand the culture here, you don't know where you're being helpful or where you're being unhelpful. And the people I'm around every day are hardworking people that have a job and that are trying to make end thing, you know, ends meet on right. themselves. But there's a lot of people here as well that are relying on those people in their family that are working hard and you know it's it's really a very codependent and dependent society here um, and that works really well in so many ways the families are very close people really take care of each other you know there's just they have words that I'm gonna butcher so I'm not even gonna say them about just really how Filipinos come together through the worst of times help support each other and it's so true um, uh, but the flip side of that is, you know, there's there's often people here that are always waiting to be helped and never seeking yeah. to, you know, help themselves as well. Correct. Yeah. And I think you and I personally have gone through the journey that NGOs, nonprofits have gone through in the past hundred years of learning, you know, uh, that, that classic phrase of I'm going to teach somebody to fish, mm -hmm. you know, I'm not going to give them a fish. Yes. You know, because yes. now they can help themselves. and. I certainly, and there are still times, you know, that my, especially like a hurricane, a typhoon comes through, you yeah. know, people need to eat, you know, it's survival yes. mode. Uh, but most of the time for us, the requests are not like life or death. Sure. You know, it's, yeah. it's just, uh, you know, can I make next, next month's rent or whatever? And there are other, you know, it's just relying, having the, the confidence in their own resolve and mm -hmm. inviting them and, and just even planting seeds of there's other ways to do this that will be more beneficial for you as a human being. Because as soon as you're reliant on me, number one, I'm being an enabler, and number two, now you're a victim. So what kind of other things have you seen when it comes to power here in the Philippines? Well, uh, one really interesting piece is we've been talking about Filipinas and the women and all that interaction and oh, God knows, you know, I've been on a journey with that. However, it's interesting to watch the men. Okay. So I think as an American, my initial thing is I'm coming in, the Filipinas turn to me, I get their attention and my first natural piece in all, and this is in the other Southeast Asian countries as well, is, oh my God, the, the, the men must be incredibly um, threatened by me, um, angry, you know, how dare you come over here and you're now getting all this attention from our, you know, our prettiest and our, you know, these young, and that is not the case. Mm. So what's your experience of that with the guys? Here? My experience is, is, and again, this is, 
always offering respect from at least my perspective, walking in and the men also, is that they have the same deference. They really do. They, they, there is something about uh, what I bring in that foreigner mode. And again, it's mixed in with my personality, which is a naturally, you know, I'm pretty good with people. But uh, I have, to, I, literally, I don't think I've ever, maybe just a very few times, and usually a more wealthy, well-to-do a Southeast Asian man might uh, think, and let's not get on the Chinese, don't go there. Uh, <laughs> but the, uh, they, they are, they're just so friendly and kind of accepting that this is part of the culture that we have, especially here in the Philippines. You know, chalk it up to 100 years of history with the United States and how that interaction has been interwoven all the way through two world wars and um, uh, everything that the Philippines has been through in their independence. But they, I, I just never run into any anti-American sentiment. Sure. I mean, I have more than they do. Sure. When they talk about the dream. When they <laughs> talk about Both the, of us feel anti-American. They talk about the dream, I say, oh, let, let me tell you, there's some things going on that I'm not happy with. Yes. And, here, and I want to let you know what they are. Yeah. Because I don't want you to be going blind. It's very true. So, so I think you and I love our country and have a million struggles with where the U.S. is at as well. So that is a funny thing. I think people here don't necessarily get just how polarized and toxic and how difficult it can be just to make a living there. So people definitely struggle here uh, making a, a living, but I see a few homeless people around here. I saw a ton where I lived in California, oh my gosh, yeah. uh, you know, and I saw people that would work, you know, 40, 50 hours a week and then go sleep in their car because they couldn't afford rent. So things are very hard here, but I think that Filipinos don't understand how hard they could be for millions and millions of Americans uh, is as well. So I know I probably sound a bit entitled talking about yeah. poor Americans, but I think that a lot of Filipinos think that if they just move to the U.S. and they know how much people get paid there, they're, they're kind of forgetting how expensive things are there as well. And... Um, you know, it is good for them to get a better feel for that. But, you know, going back to the Filipino guys, I wonder if you get that positive vibe because you are a generally nice guy with everybody that you meet. Some of the expats I meet here are just jerks. Right. I'm trying to think of a nicer right. word. Right. No, they are. That is the nicer word. Condescending. And, yes. Yeah. yeah, absolutely. Super arrogant. You know, like, so if there was foreigners in the U.S., they'd say, well, you guys got to do things like how we do around here. <laughs> Damn it. Uh, but they come here and they expect everybody to be an American. Uh, and, and even I'm at times like that, like, come on, can't you just be more American with efficiency or, you know, how people drive or stuff like that. But, right. I mean, there's foreigners here that are like that to an extreme. And my guess is, you know, the Filipino guys are thinking like, why is this girl with this idiot? Right. You know, so, so maybe it depends as well on who the foreigner is. Right. Uh, because the Philippines doesn't always attract the best foreigners out there you know you just got to look at any expat forum you know in the philippines and see how you know the guys talk right. to each other and, and it's kind of like you're back in the third grade with a bunch of bullies or and, in the locker room yeah yes yeah. yeah yeah so maybe it depends you know i i i need to get some filipino guys on here I'd it would be to, interesting the hard part is that you and i we walk around in our own bubbles so we we create this this atmosphere, yeah. and we're both really good at loving people, at caring for people, at uh, just wherever, whoever you are, I'm going to accept you as a fellow human being, and um, and our backgrounds have given us this wonderful gift to be able to be this way. Yeah. Uh, but I also wonder about some of the historical context, because I'm thinking also of the Filipino man, and um, as I meet a Filipina woman, she tells me her story. Okay, I, he got me pregnant, and then he ran off, and then he started drinking beer and gambling or what. And it, you know, I've just heard the story so many times, and it's a sad story. It's it's a true story, but how much of that is a, a generational trauma? They've been through these horrible wars. They've uh, been colonized in many respects. 
And so I, I always take that into consideration of what... And, and, and you're kinder than me, because I, 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 I see some amazing Filipino dads here that have also, you know, have that, you know, background and still are great, you know, dads. So, so I, I mean, whenever I see dads not stepping up, it's like, come on. Right. And what, and, and that would be another interesting thing for me, because I'm dating, mm -hmm. I'm seeing that much more at a sure. higher percentage than uh, what would be in the normal population. And I've seen yeah. some great dads. Oh my gosh. Yeah. I've seen some just wonderful uh, grandfathers who step up and are just taking care of business for their family, even if somebody else has it, whether it's their son or something. So, uh, but I, there is some type of sociological trauma, and I've seen it in, in the different countries, especially in Cambodia, where the, the Khmer Rouge um, uh, incident is way more recent. In other words, people our age, mm -hmm. they went through it as kids. Sure. So the, it's fresh. Sure. And I see it and feel it there uh, much more than I do here. But within all Southeast Asian countries, there's some form of that going on. Mm -hmm. uh, but it, you know, it's a very nebulous piece, and how do you evaluate it and such? And certainly, it's no excuse. It's no excuse. You know, step up and you know. And this is you know one of my things about um, the. This is one of my things about some of the government decisions, which you and I have no business commenting on. That's true. But yeah. I'll do it right now. Uh -oh. Is is why isn't there at least movement towards laws that, you know, like in our country, that require a man, especially a husband who's divorced and going, you know, to pay? Well, I think there are those laws uh, here. Consult with your attorney. <laughs> <clears throat> the views of Marco do not necessarily <laughs> represent the views of John Smillo and this channel. <laughs> so, yes, you know, I, I, I think... I could be wrong, but I really think a lot of those laws are here. Uh, but I just think that people aren't paying attorneys and going to war yeah. and all this kind of stuff as is really common, you know, in a lot of Western countries. So I, I could be wrong. Uh, I think my you're understanding right. understanding is the laws are actually here. They people are just there. aren't quite as litigious uh, as they might be. But I'm wondering the if the laws are here and a, and a woman says, I'm, I'm going after because he should be paying something for this child. Yeah. Um, is it such a laborious process? I mean, it's laborious in our country, but how much, oh my gosh, you know, bureaucracy <laughs> here yes. goes for, to new for, levels. For sure. I mean, so even the family law courts in the U.S. are like, you know, the West Wing of hell. You know, go, I've been through all of that, and in the U.S. it takes forever. It's painful. It's just degrading, dehumanizing. But ultimately... They'll go into your checking account. Absolutely. They must And I know. haven't heard that yet here. Not once. Yeah, me neither. So I, I, I think that there are a lot of laws um, here, um, but for some reason, you know, people just don't. don't <laughs> of course, I say go into your checking account. That's almost laughable because a lot of Filipinos don't have checking accounts. That's, that's so true. So then how do you go after it? That's true. I, I mean, even people starting... <laughs> You know, at the companies I work for, often they don't even have a bank account. Right. You know, uh, as adults, so yeah, it's it's just there's a lot that we uh, you assume, take for yeah, you assume, assume that, and it's like, well, yeah. it's, it can't happen because the the infrastructure, in this case, a financial infrastructure, is not there because our tight, our fairly tight tax system, you know, can come after us, and yes. and you and I, we fear the IRS. Yeah. And, Hopefully a healthy way, like, yeah, I need to pay my taxes. Yeah. Or else, right. like Al Capone, right? Sure. That's the one way they got him. Sure. You go to jail. That's right. Well, pretty interesting to talk about, <laughs> uh, you know, power. It's one of those things that is there, that exists. Everybody has a greater or less amount of it, but I think it's a bit awkward to talk about. So I'm going to be very curious to see what people think about some of the things we've talked about. But uh, yeah, really appreciate you taking the time to give us some honest thoughts about Absolutely. these things. Absolutely. Yeah, I'll, I'll, I'll always I, 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 I sit here though and I think, oh gosh, are we being like just like total intellectuals, you know, on our high and mighty, talking about things that are important to us and you and I, you know, what, this is what we talk about. We don't talk about the weather and it's kind of where we're comfortable at. 
but I hope it is always, always an invitation to whoever's listening that this type of thought, you know, to thine own self be true, you know, that self-awareness mm -hmm. is so critical to being successful and happy in life. Yeah. And so wherever somebody is, no matter what their country, what their language, or what their culture, and some of these cultures really make it difficult, uh, they, you know, they don't, some of the, the, the power structures within the culture don't want you to be too self-aware yeah. or educated sure. or such, and we've seen that in, in many developing nations. But at least here, man, you know, as much as possible to be able to help out and help people better themselves, I think that's what you and I are all about. Absolutely. Boom, boom. Well, guys, I appreciate you taking the time to watch. Definitely would love to hear your thoughts on this uh, subject. A little bit controversial, I know. So make sure and drop a comment below. And as always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch. Take care.